Hey guys, it's Brandon here again at Bape Extreme. Um, just wanted to bring you, uh, this is actually going to kind of be a up close, uh, in your face kind of, uh, I'm not going to really say it's a how-to video, but kind of sort of is, uh, but uh, you know, I'm just not going to go through the full process of it. Um, off the hop, I would like to say I'm very sorry to the vendor, which is Vaporous.com. Um, I've been meaning to do this review for the last uh, couple weeks. Um, the only issue that I've been running into is deciding on how I was going to do the review. Um, and to be honest with you, it was a, it was a tedious process uh, for me to get operating myself. Um, just because of the fact that I wasn't really... Um, or I shouldn't say that. I, I, I'm not... I wasn't originally that big into rebuildable atomizers, uh, you know, I was basically just a dripper and uh, I was using cardo tanks uh, for the most part. Um, so with that being said, uh, Song at Vaporous, I just want to say I'm sorry, uh, I didn't mean to uh, have this drag on as long as it has, um, but we're going to get her done today for you. Um, just to kind of give you guys a little bit of a history on Vaporous.com, uh, this isn't really a shout out or um, you know I don't uh, I don't do promotional videos for uh, for any vendor whatsoever. Um, but I just kind of wanted to give you my kind of my impressions. Um, Vaporous.com, uh, since I've been dealing with them and I've been dealing with them for uh, numerous amount of months now. Um, basically, what I've noticed is they've actually expanded uh, their actual line. Um, and I know in Canada it's it's hard to get uh, some of the mods and some of the some of the toys and the accessories uh, that we uh, normally see in the states and in the UK. Um, but Vaporous.com is actually doing a fantastic job of trying to um, keep up with this thing we call vaping. Um, with the amount of toys and gizmos you can get nowadays, it's it's getting. Uh, it's getting crazy, which is uh, which is nice because a lot of us, uh, you know, a lot of us vape for uh, for different reasons. Uh, you know, whether it's to get off the old uh, stinky sticks or if it's just like for me, it's it's more of a hobby, I guess. Um, yeah, it's it's got me off cigarettes, but uh, it, it's becoming a hobby for me. Um, so, with that being said, the nice part is is that Vaporous is kind of. Uh, feeding my um, my hobby I guess you could say um, because they've gotten in a lot more mods um, I've noticed just within the last couple of weeks they've added uh, three or four new mods um, mainly tube mods uh, a few other things that they've added also uh, is also the rebuildables uh, the rebuildable atomizers and uh, they also have the VV Nova tanks um, which we are all very familiar with, I'm sure, by this point. Uh, this one here is actually uh, a VV Nova tank. It's just got the the aluminum uh, um, tank portion, which are also available at uh, at Vaporous.com, and I think there's seven or eight different colors. Um, but anyway, it's not about the uh, it's not about the VV. Um, this here review is actually going to be about a atomizer tank. So this here, ladies and gentlemen, is the Genesis DID uh, clone. This is not the actual original. This is uh, basically a knockoff of it. Um, and to be honest with you, it's actually a very close, uh, close in comparison. Um, there might be a few differences. Unfortunately, guys, uh, this is kind of my first impression type deal. Um, and I've never actually owned a Genesis, so I can't really compare them side by side, saying this one's better than that one. Uh, I'm just kind of going off by uh, by what I have here. So um, this is going to be um, not really a how-to, but we're going to kind of do a, a quick how to put it together. Uh, when you actually get the, uh, the DID uh, from Vapors.com, it actually comes in a really nice... Um, tin case, sorry about the reflection. Um, inside said tin uh, is basically the atomizer fully assembled uh, minus the fact that you actually have to build the wick. 
uh, and then of course do your coil. Uh, but you actually get two pieces of the uh, stainless steel mesh. I believe it's the 400, uh, uh, 400 stainless steel. Um, and then you also get, uh, I think, about three and a half feet of the, uh, of the actual canthal wire. Uh, and this here is, all, uh, is obviously for your coil. Um, and then you also get the Allen key uh, required for the screws, um, which I'll uh, get to momentarily. So as you can see guys, there's, there's half a dozen different pieces here um, and it's pretty easy to assemble. Um, so basically what you have here is you've got a standard uh, bottom cap. Um, now just for FYI guys, the 510 connection on the, uh, actually it's on, I think it's on both uh, the Genesis, Genesis and the actual clone. Um, the bottom piece is actually fully machined. Um, it's not a press in piece, it's not a you know it's not um, it's not your standard connector it's actually the 510 is a full piece here um, basically there's also an o-ring here at the bottom I'm just trying to get that to focus a little bit better guys uh, there's an o-ring here at the bottom and then of course it's got your uh, rubber grommets uh, on the inside here as well um, so basically what I've been doing um, when I either go to clean it out or uh, you know changing juices or whatever if I just feel like breaking it down for I don't know entertainment reasons um, all I basically do is this here is your center pin so that's your uh, that actually goes inside your connector and as you can see the other ends here are threaded um, it basically oops it inserts through the bottom like so and when you get to the actual um, the flared part here, which I'm not sure if you can really see that on camera. I'm going to try and see if I can get that to focus a little better. Let's see what I can get here. A little better. Come on. Let's back it off just a touch. That might be better. Okay, sorry about that, guys. Um, so yeah, basically, there's a flare part or flared part here, uh, which is basically kind of like a pressure fit into your grommets. All you're going to do is just basically shove that right inside. Um, you're probably not going to have too many issues with having to uh, post pull on these things because they're set up pretty decent, and you'll uh, you'll see that after it's uh, after it's fully assembled. Um, so basically, you put your uh, your center post in, which is your positive. Um, at that point there's a, a tube here and as you can see whoops I'm trying to use this as a pointer as you can see there's uh, there's two o-rings at the bottom uh, of each uh, piece the threads are the same on both ends so it doesn't matter if it goes on this way or if it goes on this way they're they're identical in uh, every way shape or form um, so basically you just slide it over top thread it down now the o-ring you'll notice uh, will actually disappear once it's fully threaded down then just give it a little uh, little extra twist just to make sure she's good and tight um, because you don't want any e-juice uh, obviously leaking down throughout your tank. Um, so then at that point that's basically the bottom section uh, of, the, uh, of the Genesis. Now the top cap, um, again guys I've uh, I've already had this vaping and running really well, so uh, I'm sure you guys are all asking why the hell would you take it apart just to do a video, but, uh, well, practice makes perfect, I guess. <laughs> um, so anyway, so you've got your, uh, your two pieces here. Um, now, this bottom piece uh, right here, you can see, has the three holes in it, um, but this one here is actually threaded where you can see the top is not. Um, so basically at that point, oh, and sorry, there's also two O-rings on here as well. Now the only downfall that I kind of found with um, with the kit that's sent, uh, the kit itself I believe is $39.99 on Vaporous' site, uh, which isn't necessarily that bad of a price uh, for a rebuildable atomizer tank. But the only 
the only kind of downfall that I found with this as opposed to the Genesis, and I know the Genesis is extensively more money, um, is the fact that it comes with spare O-rings. Um, I, I can't really say longevity, uh, whether or not it's going to leak or not, because of the fact that I haven't used this that long. I've only put uh, maybe three tanks through it. Um, so it's uh, it's hard to say whether or not you're going to have an issue with the uh, with the O-rings leaking. Um, can't be a vaping video though, dropping something. Um, so basically all you're going to do is you're going to take the stainless steel tube, uh, which is... Uh, dirty on the inside for some reason. So just make sure uh, you clean it all out there. So you're just basically going to take the uh, the stainless tube uh, that you have and it's just a pressure fit uh, on the o-ring so you're just going to push that down like so um, and that's basically your tank section there. So that's uh, that's pretty much it in a nutshell. So now that you got the bottom section of your tank uh, assembled, um, at that point go ahead and take your top cap um, and all you're going to do is just kind of slide it carefully over top. Uh, there's also a grommet in the top here as well. Um, so you're just going to take it and then just kind of thread it on like so. And there's your tank. Uh, your tank at that point's uh, fully assembled. Um, now you're also going to notice um, on the top there are three holes. Um, the larger hole of the three is actually where your stainless steel wick's going to go. Um, the second one here uh, that's closest to the wicking hole is actually your negative uh, for your coil. Um, and then your furthest one on this side here is uh, basically just a filler hole um, so that you can take, uh, you know, whether you use um, a syringe to fill it um, or if you knew, use the um, needle caps for your bottles uh, to fill them with, uh, you know, basically it's up to you on, uh, on what you want to use. Um, so at this point, what we're going to do is there's also three small nuts. And there is a little bit of a difference. Whoops. And I'm not really sure if you're even going to be able to notice this or not. But I'm going to see if I can grip this. I'm going to grab some tweezers. Where's my tweezers? Right there. So if we were to actually take this, I'm gonna see if I can get that to focus in on there. Uh, let's get this to focus a little bit better. There. So as you can see guys, um, there is a little um, flare on this side and then on this side here it's completely flat okay I know it's hard to see with the silver tweezers let's pull it out the edge there we go so you can see uh, you can see the the flare here um, and then this side here is completely flat um, so basically what I've been doing um, and again there's no instruction manual to this thing either guys that's why it's not really uh, anything you're going to recommend to you know a guy that just bought his first uh, regular e-cig kit or Joytech or whatever e-cig kit that they're going to use. Um, so all I do is I just thread the first one down and then just kind of snug it up. You don't want to over tighten it by any means because you don't want to mash anything down and you don't want to short uh, this center post out um, on the on your base because uh, basically that's going to cause a direct short because um, this is still your positive um, and then of course your the outside body of the tank is going to be your negative. Um, so let's see if I can get that to go back to regular focusing. And we're going to bring that down here. Oh, it won't let me do that. I'm still working on this autofocus thing. Let's bring it back down to where I was before. So there we go. Um, so yeah, basically you put your first nut on um, with the flat side facing down. Down. Um, 
Um, and then at that point what I've been doing is I take the flare side down and thread that down. Now people ask why would you do something like that? Well basically what's happening is with the flat side you get a lot more electrical contact. Um, I'm not sure if it no makes a huge difference on how well it performs or whatever the deal may be, um, but I just uh, I just kind of use common sense and uh, put the two bigger parts together for uh, for more uh, for more electrical connection at that point. Um, so yeah, so that's basically um, as far as we're going to go uh, for that side of it. Now, what you're going to do is you're going to take one of the small screws uh, that you have, and yes guys, these are small screws, and you're going to want to put it in the hole that's closest to your wicking hole. Okay, And don't tighten it all the way down, just put it on there so that you know, you've still got a little bit of a space, because you're going to need that uh, while we, uh, when we go to build, build the coil. Um, now the wick side of things, I've already gone ahead and pre-made one um, and it has been performing fairly well. Um, so this is the one that I'm going to be using. I haven't really felt a need to change it yet, I mean, mainly because of the fact that I've only put uh, you know, three tanks on through this wick. So at that point you're just going to take it and stick it inside the hole um, and that's pretty much it. So now you've got your wick installed, your first screw installed, and then the first two nuts are, uh, are snugged up, uh, ready to go. Um, now at that point, what you're gonna do is you're going to take your canthal wire, and we're gonna start to make the coil. Um, this is gonna be the hardest part to do because I am going to try and do this on camera the best that I can. Um, but I have a really oddball feeling it's not going to work out the way that I want it to, but I'll show you the end result uh, nevertheless. Um, so basically all I'm doing guys is just kind of pulling the coils, trying to take out any kinks uh, in the actual wire itself. I'll, all you do is just kind of run your fingernail over it. Uh, you'll have to excuse it, my furnace just kicked out of my garage. Um, so you want it basically as smooth as you possibly can because uh, any kinks or bends uh, are generally going to create hot spots because it will actually lift it right off the wick. Um, so at that point what I was doing um, is try and keep your distances between post to post um, as short as possible. Um, so what I had done, oops, what I had done with my first one is shut that off for now because it's kind of loud. Um, I was wrapping mine in towards the coil, or in towards, sorry, the center post. And what I'll do is I'll get it on there, and then I'll show you what I mean. So that's basically how you want it. Try and get the glare off for you. So you've got it going to the inside, um, to the inside of the actual uh, wick itself. Um, now there have been guys that'll try and line it up with the center of the hole, which is yeah, that's fine. Whichever uh, whichever way you want to do it. So what I was doing is actually taking it inside. Oops. Inside. Um, and then wrapping it accordingly. Uh, so what I was doing is I think four or five uh, wraps. Now you don't want them overly tight, um, but you also don't want them sloppy loose because you'll get uh, some really nasty hot spots on it. Um, so basically you just kind of wrap it around, tuck the coil down, wrap it around again, trying to do this on the camera the best that I can guys I'm really sorry I'm not used to doing this up close and personal stuff so as you're wrapping the coil just kind of try and keep them evenly spaced make sure they're not touching 
um, touching one another. Try and do the best job that you can. And I'm trying to do it as neat as I can because I'm doing this on video. So as you can see guys, there's uh, I got a few wraps there. Um, I'm gonna throw I'm gonna throw one more on from what I had on the last one because I had problems trying to get it to vape on my Proveri. Um, it wasn't the fact that it was shorting out, um, but the issue that I had is that re the resistance itself was so low. Um, for the life of me, I can't remember what resistance of wire or what gauge of wire actually comes with uh, the Genesis kit, um, but I'll. Uh, it seems like a 32 watt or something like that. So anyway, guys, now that you've got the coil um, wrapped all the way around. Um, what I was doing is, at that point, you wrap it, so you go around one more time and then bring it back, so that way you're basically as short as you possibly can. Now you remember you don't want the wick to touch the center post, which I am probably doing right now. Oh, I got a little gap there. So remember, the shorter the distance, the better, um, because if it gets to the point where your lengths of wire are too long, um, basically as soon as you vape it, it'll end up snapping uh, at the top. Um, so basically at that point, that's kind of your coil. And we'll pretty it up a little bit uh, in a couple minutes here, guys. Um, I just got to uh, get everything, like we'll fix up the coil and, and get it all situated. So now that we've got the coil wrapped, uh, so I've got one, two, three, four, five, six. So I did six wraps on mine. Um, at that point, you can pretty much just clip the wire off. I like to leave a little bit extra just in case I got to play with the coil a bit. Um, and then at the bottom, we'll just uh, we'll just clip the, the little piece off. Um, so now at that point, or at this point here, guys, sorry, um, you kind of want to uh, play with your coils a bit. Try and make sure they're nice and evenly spaced, um, the best that you can get them. Uh, so that looks decent. I'm just gonna pull it off the thing. Um, so yeah, that's uh, that's pretty much the gist of it at that point. Now, of course, because I'm doing this live on video here, I'm just gonna throw this on my Proveri. The other thing, guys, too. If you are getting into rebuildables, uh, this is kind of going to be my safety tip for the week, I guess. Um, my suggestion is is make sure the first time that you put this on any device that it is protected. It's got to have a short circuit protector, short short circuit protection on it uh, in one way, shape, or or another. Um, the main reason being that you have so many possibilities of short circuits because you're using steel on steel on steel. Um, you want to make sure that you're not going to short up, short out or blow up a, uh, <coughs> blow up your mods. Um, so that's kind of my, my safety tip for the week. Um, so at that point, um, you're just going to thread that on. Uh, you'll probably notice that it'll end up pushing your nuts up the first time. Uh, so at that point, just kind of snug everything back down to make sure she's good and tight. Um, and then I know this is set really high, so I'm going to actually bring this down. Oh crap, let's actually do an atomizer check on it first and see if it'll actually work. See guys, this is where the uh, <laughs> the fun part starts. Um, basically, you want to make sure that you're not shorting out the mod at all, which apparently I am doing that right now. So you want to make sure that your negative's not touching any more than it is, than it has to be on the actual post. And I'm just going to bring this down. Okay, so 
so bring that down to 3.3 volts. So what I'm going to do here guys, I'm just going to drop uh, a little bit of juice on it just to get the uh, just to get it wet. And there we go. She's vaping and vaping really well. I just want to check the atomizer or the uh, resistance on it. I think it's going to be low for some reason. I don't know why it keeps dropping. And again, guys, like I said, I'm new to this rebuildable atomizer stuff, so you know you have to kind of bear with me here for a minute. And yeah, and another thing, guys, you don't necessarily have to worry about scorching anything. It's not, uh, you know, it's not like your standard um, wick and coil uh, where it actually either burns the coil up or it burns the actual wick up. Uh, because it's stainless steel, you don't really have to worry about that. But it's actually vaping on my Proveri, which is good. So yeah, guys, it's... Uh, it's definitely a neat little device, as you can see, my Proveri needs to be charged. Uh, and I have another battery here. So, we're gonna change this out first. And we're using the IMR, or the AW batteries, the IMR AWs. And we'll thread that back on there, okay. So now that we got it to vape, which is a key thing, um, the next thing we're going to do is fill it because that's important because we have to have juice in it. So uh, I'm going to use, I'm actually just gonna use my little uh, needle bottle here. Actually, I don't need that on there, oops. And guys, I'm sorry it's an extensively long video, but I already warned you at the beginning that it was gonna be a little longer than most of my normal videos. Um, so yeah, I was gonna use just a standard filler bottle. Um, and then at that point, all you're gonna do is just stick the needle in uh, and then just fill it up. Now these do hold quite a bit of juice. I think it's like five or six mils or something like that. Um, so all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna kind of give her a little bit of a, like I'm not gonna fill it right at the top. Um, but, oh, and just so you know, this is the, uh, oops, strawberry shortcake from, uh, Flavor Crafters. A very nice juice. And that's actually their 70%, uh, VG line, uh, just for FYI. Um, so basically all you're going to do is, uh, put that screw back in, um, take your top cap and then you're going to thread it on um, and then of course your drip tip right um, so basically what you're seeing right here is actually what you get in the box again minus the uh, the assembly portion of things um, but yeah that's uh, that's the Genesis DID um, so let's uh, throw her back on the Proveri here and I just want to give it a quick vape And it's vaping really well. Now, a couple kind of tips and tricks uh, about the uh, about the Genesis DID. Now, as you're going to see right here, oops, uh, right here is a small air hole. That's actually where your air draw is coming from. Okay, guys. Um, because the bottom portion of the tank is uh, completely sealed, um, this is actually where your air uh, your air hole comes out. Now, another key thing about the uh, the Genesis, and I thought this was kind of a gimmick at first, um, and I didn't really like. I've watched a few reviews on the actual Genesis, um, but that hole actually serves more purpose uh, than you would actually think. Um, because if you 
can see inside um, there's your two filler screws and there's your wick okay so the wick right now is actually at the bottom okay so if you actually line your air hole up by just turning the actual cap to pretty much right behind the wick it actually changes the throat hit and I know that sounds really weird but it does um, it's because of the way that the airflow actually flows through the actual top chamber and the way that the vaporizer or the the vapor is mixed with the air when you're drawing um, it changes your throat hit that's better much better as you can tell guys it produces phenomenal amount of vapor um, now what you can actually do is if you turn this either clockwise or counterclockwise um, you can actually intensify the throat hit now I'm actually vaping an 18 milligram juice um, so the throat hits actually fairly decent as it sits now just at regular 18 um, but if you had a juice that seemed to have a little bit weaker of a throat hit but you like the taste of it um, you can actually adjust this by turning it uh, either clockwise or counterclockwise uh, to adjust your actual throat hit. Now, as a warning, if you, so that's actually where my coil is now. Um, if you were to turn this uh, 180 degrees, that would be the most intense uh, throat hit that you'd actually get off of it. Um, and again, I, I don't know the whole technical spiel on it uh, or whatever, but you know what guys I'm actually fairly impressed so it actually produces a phenomenal amount of vapor um, now the other thing too guys is the flavor is a lot different than you would actually get in a regular CE2 style or WIC style um, device that you'd use. I actually find it to be a lot cleaner in taste. And it works really well. So yeah, Guys, um, again, sorry about the extensively long video, but uh, Vaporous.com um, has the, uh, the Genesis DIDs. Uh, they are in stock right now. Um, they are $39.95 or $99. I can't remember exactly what five cents is and that much of a difference. Um, so yeah, check them out, guys. Uh, this is the Genesis clone uh, DID uh, from Vaporous.com. Um, so yeah, as always guys, let's, uh, keep on vaping.